Hello friends, this is Joseph N. Train from Homo Sound. The idea of Homo Sound is very simple. We want to help artists, promoters, and other people in the scene to share their message, their experiences, their learnings, and life lessons. And as a byproduct, we hope that some of these insights will help and inspire others. And that's exactly why we're going to have chats and ask questions to some of the most interesting people in the scene. We hope you will enjoy. In this chat with Elad Magdasi, we explore his work and history. Elad is a music producer and DJ based currently in Berlin. He runs his own label called Front Left, which released vinyls. And he's also been releasing on labels such as Anagram. And last year, he landed on K Records too. He has a great portfolio of music videos, and in fact, is also into video making. His recent projects include an EP with Sinfoil on Front Left. The EP is called Drum Spirit, and I recommend you check it out. He's also been playing for the first time back to back with his husband and label co founder Matthias Weber. And I also recommend that you check out, if you haven't yet, his video of Silent Trust and Killer Hertz. In particular, I really like about Elad that he mixes video and he tells a story not only with his tracks, but combining with videos. In this episode, we dug into a couple of uh, interesting things. How you get your music out. Why creating a, a circle of artists and support network can help you a lot if you're an artist or if you have any sort of creative output. Why finding your own way of making art matters. And for instance, uh, in Elad's case, videos, it's something that really complements music and helps him tell his story. And eventually we also discuss about uh, why we should be more grateful for all of those people and professionals who do lights in clubs. Without further ado, we start with Elad Magdasi. Hope you will enjoy. Nice, Elad. Thank you so much for, for being here. Glad uh, to be here. In time. Nice. Good to see you. Thank you. It's very nice to meet you in person as well. And glad to have you here on the interview, on the podcast. Yes, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Um, I know you've done a lot of work with your music, with your yeah. label, uh, your videos. Mm -hmm. One thing that always uh, kind of spoke to me when I watch your stuff is that you always paired, in, in some occasion, you actually paired the video yeah. with uh, your music, mm -hmm. which I find it very beautiful. And I'm thinking uh, now about uh, one of your tracks, I think it was called uh, Killer Hertz. Yeah. Um, and there was this video, which, which was very well done, of... Um, I think people are kind of escaping from this uh, ghost, <laughs> this <laughs> ball of energy. It's a, it's a killer hurt. It's a killer hurt, exactly. Really? And do you want to tell us more about like what's the concept be, be beyond the video? Yeah, and sure. The track? So actually my other job, apart from DJing, is I'm doing uh, videos. I'm directing, animating, uh, editing, everything that has to do with that. And that was uh, my main job for maybe 10 years or more. And uh, that's why every time there's some... Uh, release. I really like to combine the two and make a, a video, a music video, because for me it's like a, it fits. You know, like when I hear the audio, I already already imagine the videos in the back. So, for example, with Kilohertz, um, the idea was it's very abstract, but the idea was like mm. about this killer hertz, which is kind of like a wave of sorts that just goes through the city and kind of chasing people and the vibe of people escaping from something was what I kept in mind. So that basically what channels the whole the whole scene and the whole story and uh, it starts with this weird concrete cube which is just I, 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 it's what I had in mind when I thought okay what could shoot those hertz and it's done in 3D yeah. and it's combined with um, some software that I use and basically uh, we shot it all around Berlin I think some scenes were in the old the airport and Victoria Park and really a lot of locations and it was pretty fun yeah yeah and I uh, I was, uh, I mean, really well done. It was a Thank beautiful you. video to watch, actually. Did you shot? Did you shoot the video actually yourself, or you did the post production? Um, this one, I think I shot myself. Uh -huh. Sometimes I split it. I have a friend. His name is Paul. He's a really good photographer, so he helps me shoot a lot of the videos. Yeah. But uh, in this one specifically, I also shot everything myself. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well done. Thank Great. you. <laughs> uh, and this thing of like combining uh, the video with music, I think, is something that, uh, in a way, techno is missing a bit. It's uh, uh, I think uh, it's like uh, it's somehow like a, it's a default thing in all of the other industries. You know, every band, even in indie rock, pop, everywhere you go, there's always a music video, and uh, it's very important for me. I know like uh, techno. I, I don't know if it's missing it because some people maybe prefer to just enjoy the music. You know, I 
think even I saw some some people wrote one something. I I think either it was my video or some other music video. They wrote like I would prefer to just enjoy the track, and I, I accept that. You know, it's kind of like uh, maybe books versus movies. You know, some people just like the words, yeah. and some people want also the visual. And because I think my my job is doing the visual, so it's re- for me it's like it's a must. You know, like yeah. Uh, and it's I think it's beautiful that you can combine your other side. So yeah, exactly. Be on your music together with music. Yeah, it's basically doing everything that I know. <laughs> basically, taking all my <laughs> knowledge and putting it in the, into one thing. And luckily, it's possible to do it nowadays because uh, maybe I don't know. Ten years ago, I don't know if it, there would be the platform for it. But uh, since YouTube and techno became friends, so to speak, and like yeah. uh, everybody's uh, watching techno on YouTube, which you think in the last years it uh, got even more. Yeah. Then it's perfect for me. Yes, it is, and uh, and I'm actually uh, I believe that this is going to be a huge trend. So YouTube yeah. is becoming probably YouTube and Instagram are where people's attention is, mm-hmm. and YouTube video in general is a way to communicate. Yeah, and now it's being uh, adopted by a lot of uh, scenes and like uh, cultures. I've seen a lot of music videos actually in techno in the last year or two. Yeah. Okay, maybe not a lot, but a lot more. Let's say like I think I've seen from Fiac, Aneta, and even some other like artists that are even new, and it's it's really nice. I I like that somebody puts this extra step and it gives you like another. Another level of, of the of the track, you know. Yeah, it tells another story. I, I completely agree. And I do you think that this is something that like uh, artists uh, in general, it might not be video, but artists need to do to actually, in a way, be unique, like find their own unique voice and telling their message. A, a music video. Music videos, or it can be It's something else. It's just an else. example. I yeah. mean, I think if you feel like it's something that speaks to you, then yeah, do it. I mean, uh, some people I know, some producers that maybe would be the other opposite. They would be like, I would just want to produce my music and put it out there. Mm. I maybe don't see a video to it. I just feel what I feel when I produce it, you know. And then they just put it out, and that's already unique enough. It really, it really has to come from you. If you, if you feel like you want to see it, or if you have an idea, or if you want to take it. To a different level, it doesn't have to be better or just different. Yeah. Then you should definitely do it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree, and I would love to see more. Even uh, there would be more. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's always some in plan. Like I, I always have ideas for music videos without tracks sometimes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, it, it's a project. It's it, it, it's like a project, meaning like it takes time, it takes mm-hmm. effort, and every time, like uh, sometimes I have to switch ideas because of either budget reason or availability reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, for example, Silent Trust, I, I did it eventually animated. Which is the one the of the latest ro- ones? The right? robot ones. Yes, the yeah, one the they, they would be like yeah. moving robots. So I just did it yeah. all in animation because it's also it was easier for me. It's not that easy, but easier. Yeah. So like uh, I could just do it all by myself. I didn't need other people. I could just do it from home and and wrap it up. Uh, right. But for the next record, there will be definitely more videos. Yeah, oh, yeah looking for forward sure. to <laughs> seeing that. Yeah, yes. nice. And in in a way, like your story, adding an element as well, reminded me of uh, there is a is a duo, French duo called The Blaze. Okay, uh, you know them? Uh, no. Okay, so they, they do a lot of stuff, which is like, it's a bit, it's not techno. Okay. They, it's more like electronic music. And they do this, like, they're basically short movies mm-hmm. with a song. And one of them is a um, filmmaker, and uh, the other one is the electronic music producer. Nice. They're huge, 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 huge. They have a huge following. They play around the world, and they do a lot of, like, this interesting stuff. Combination of audio Combination. video. Yeah, exactly. And then what you just said, like, reminded me of them, because they say sometimes we get the idea of the video, And then we create the music, or very often we do it together. Yes. Yeah. I mean, even in my normal video work, like uh, what I what I do for for a living, I, a lot of time the audio can top the video in a way that somebody is giving me something to edit, or I'm creating some kind of commercial or some intro, and the audio that goes with it is actually what for me is is the most impactful. So if it would be with different music. It might not work so well, so that's yeah. why for me it's always like a, it's like a harmony of two two elements talking together. Yes, it okay. always have to kind of like match. Sorry, no, no it makes sense. Uh, and I think it's uh, when it matches, especially like it's uh, kind of increases the 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 power of like yeah. the, the message you're telling. It's like the lights and the music in a club. Yeah, exactly. You know, when when both of them speak in the same language, and I think lighting is super important in a club, like. Uh, Any club, even maybe also outside in festivals, but uh, when you, when the light when the light guy or like a girl is doing a really good job, it's it's really amazing. I I could just stand there and I'm looking at the top, of uh, this at the the top of the club, and I'm just like, wow, <laughs> something special is happening. And yeah. if there's a situation when there are no lights or maybe nothing much is happening, then your brain is interpreting the whole situation differently. I agree. It creates a moment, like yeah. it creates something that uh, enhances the experience. Uh, is there any club that comes to mind when you're thinking about a good combination of music and lights? 
Uh, well, um, honestly, I don't go to so many clubs. I go to very few that I just got to go. I just got used to go there and I'm going there again and again. And um, of course, all the other clubs that I go is the ones that I usually play at. Mm-hmm. But most of them have really good uh, combinations of light and, uh, and light music. And music yeah. Yeah. Uh, all, the, yeah. all the clubs in Berlin are really, really good light guys. And they, or again, like girls, yeah. <laughs> and they do a really, really good job. And it's really, it's really nice to see that uh, that um, that the the people who are doing the lights are actually paying attention to to the to the music. And it's almost like they know the tracks and they know what's going to happen. It's mm-hmm. really it's really cool when you're on the floor to see those reactions. Yeah, it, it is. And, and actually, it's, I was thinking some time ago that basically the light guys they don't get much attention because they're usually like sitting at the back of the room. Yeah. And yes, you appreciate the lights, but you don't even know like that these are people who are working and putting a lot of work yeah. and, and making the experience. Exactly, it's so it's subconsciously so important. Like sometimes you could get either annoyed or very happy uh, according to the light. Well, one of my light guy friends, I always told him you should have a timetable posted for the light guys too. Like uh, it, and it, he liked the idea, but I don't know if the if it went forward to the club. But I, I thought <laughs> like if like the DJs get so much attention and everybody knows who is playing and when, why not the the, the the light people? You know. I agree. And, and to- usually like the light guys work more longer hours. <laughs> they, yeah, I think they have like eight shi- eight hour shift maybe. I mean, it's like it's very repetitive. It's not easy on the brain, you know. And then they go home and they come back for another one. <laughs> exactly, and and they are usually alone. Like there's no people like dancing with them, asking them, giving them attention. They're like yeah. sitting somewhere. At home by themselves. No, actually, I, I I do see they get sometimes attention because uh, <laughs> they can get actually popular. I think uh, I had always like this dream of like maybe in the last uh, three hours of the party I would just go and hang with the light guy and learn what he's doing. Oh, okay, that would be yeah. nice. nice. I know a few, and it's like I said, actually lately I've seen also a lot of uh, of, of light uh, frows. Oh, fuck, wow. I said it of Dutch. Light uh, <laughs> light women. It's yeah, really yeah. nice. Like uh, more, I see a lot more and more. So I don't know if it's like a new thing or like uh, clubs. Uh, the the variety the variety is really nice. I think definitely like when there's more attention, like uh, and people start appreciating more the market and the people who want to do that expands as well. And it's nice to see that there's there's no it's not a male thing. It's yeah, yeah. That everybody can. Same do, like what happens with the uh, DJing in the last uh, years. It it's becoming so nice to see more women on the booth yeah. and like more women get the chance to play and to show up, especially in big clubs and, and everywhere. You know, yeah. much much more respected and, and it's. They really deserve it. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's uh, yeah. For, for, I think electronic music used to be traditionally like a male-dominated industry, like for the ones. wrong reasons. For the wrong reasons, exactly. Um, especially techno, for some reasons, like they were, it was predominantly like male, male guys uh, in their thirties, whatever. Like there wasn't like much variety in terms of like at least sexual. Uh, yeah. yeah. It was in general. I think in general the perception was that techno is very like uh, strong and dark, and and somehow that was related to men, even though that's not yeah. correct. But that was somehow the perception, and now it starts to break. That techno can also be melodic and can also be pretty. And again, that doesn't mean that it's more female, but it's just like the, the whole the whole like um, the whole stigma is like being broken down. And you find more niche niches and more like people who like this and people like that. And sometimes very like I don't know, very happy people would like more dark aggressive techno. So it's like it's very like. Uh, it's, it's very diverse. <laughs> it's very diverse, and I think being music, it should be it should be like inclusive and not like exactly. exclusive to a segment of the population. Yes, and it's beautiful to see. Like I think the more people, the more women take on techno, the more other people will think, okay, this is great, it's possible. And the more new women that are thinking about being a DJ or producing, they will see, oh, it's I mean, it's totally, it's normal. Like you know, I can do it too. Perhaps. I think they were they were thinking this way already. Maybe just the industry was somehow limiting those mm-hmm. options for them. You know, like um, I think there would probably be a lot more uh, female producers out there than we know. They just didn't get the stage, mm-hmm. same as the male producers got. And now it looks like it's getting much much better. Like uh, you see that the, a lot of promoters and organizers don't don't see uh, they they see beyond that, and then they would say, okay, you're good, you can't play for us. Yeah. And that's a great thing, actually, because people are paying attention to mm. giving space to yes. women consciously. That I'd say, I mean, there shouldn't be no difference theoretically. Yeah. Maybe there was historically, and people are correcting that by giving more options to everyone. Yes, yeah. and the new generation, I think, sees that. The new generations, they see it, and for them, it will be already like a normal thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, very, very cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to see that that's a big shift in the industry. Um, I know about it, and I was like, wow, that's pretty nice because. 
it's uh, it's nice physically first of all where you can go there and dance and feel there's more space people are really nice to you mm. and also in the let's say in the um, in the mental kind of uh, vibe that people are that's like this front left vibe so to speak which is like people who are just really free and you can get to don know them really easily and they would you right away um, share their uh, feelings with you and you can talk for hours and you know you have this feeling that you meet someone and you already feel like you know them for a long time so that happens to me a lot on that corner and uh, then at some point it was actually a really funny story uh, or interesting funny that uh, I used to uh, give you spistics with my music to DJs mm-hmm. and um, Uh, it was maybe 2014 or something like this and uh, was he reading in Berlin yeah it was okay. right after I moved and uh, I think nobody was doing it so much people <laughs> either gave CDs or so, so I was like I'm just gonna give you some sticks <laughs> and uh, I gave one to Ben clock uh-huh. and it had a bunch of unreleased tracks of mine on it like stuff that are like unmastered unfinished just it was just like what I had in that time <laughs> and uh, I think um, so he took it and then maybe a couple of months later uh, I heard him play. And all of a sudden, Out of Nowhere comes up my track. I, wow. I, I, didn't, I didn't know about it. Just, it just happened. And I was like, I, I was shocked because I didn't even believe it. It took me a second to recognize it. And that made me think, whoa, actually, maybe my music is, is okay. <laughs> and then, then came the idea to make a label. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we decided with the Front Left Records. Same, actually, the same guy that I told you about before, Paul. He was like, hmm, maybe we call it Front Left Records. And I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> It brings nice it, I'm sure it brings up nice emotions to, to you and, and yeah because I eventually think. the all the artists that are on the label are part of that uh, vibe so right, okay. they're there yeah. it's basically music from that corner got it got it yeah and it's all people you you know yeah, yeah definitely yeah. It, it, another interesting thing like do you think that rela- interpersonal relationships are matter a lot when you are when you have your label when you produce music or is purely a matter of music um, I mean uh, for for myself uh, you 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 can just do whatever you want uh, you don't need to know other people for it but if you want to break out it does help to, mm. to know people I mean even if it's just for your own label uh, it's, it's good to know the some some, some key uh, ideas and factors in the industry about uh, how to how to release music mm-hmm. who to contact I mean stuff you can also find out by yourself but obviously when you know people it will mm-hmm. be easier for you faster you can get the information yeah Th- that's better. It's better and also like what, what I figure out for myself is that like it's a supporting network yeah. like you you start helping people you help your friends out you don't need to like you need to connect with people who are like 10 years ahead of you you can just have your friends your front left corner and then you help each other one day you release on their label they release on your label yeah that happens yeah yeah and I think it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing like it makes a community like uh, help each other. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, sometimes it just even happens naturally. You don't even do it out of, like, uh, stress to... You don't, have, you don't have to push and do it on purpose. But, yeah, I mean, definitely, uh, for example, the fifth record of Front Left, I was like, uh, okay, let's release more music from Friends. And we did that. We released music mm-hmm. from Daito. Uh, yeah. His name is Lenny and, and Kyle Geiger. Both of them are really good friends of mine. So it was also nice to, to give more back, you know, to, to show more, not just my own music, mm-hmm. and uh, go a bit outside of the scope. Or in the sixth release, we released music from um, Sinfall. Sinfall. And yeah. he's the mm-hmm. owner of Anagram, which is a really good Dutch label. And mm-hmm. we're also really good friends. So it's a connection we built over, I don't know, maybe in the last four years. And also, like you said, we, we, we don't even think about it, but we did exchange. Like I released on Anagram, he released on my label. It, it, it's kind of like a symbiosis relationship that we, that we do to, not just to help each other, just because it's nice, just because we want to. Yeah, and I, yes. I think it's uh, in the end like these people are your friends for life yeah exactly like, they become really people you, you sometimes family sometimes friends uh, and it's very nice when you see that this is these collaborations like continue over the years exactly. like you met someone like randomly <coughs> completely random before, yeah, yeah. <laughs> think, uh, think we're specifically with sinful I think it was like I either wrote in, he, I, I liked one of his tracks and I really wanted it didn't do anything about it and then five la- later you write me hey can I have your track and I was like oh I just wanted to write you about that the same and then it was kind of like wow. really meant to be you know like and then we became really nice friends yeah match match made to happen yeah, yeah. very nice yes and um, in terms of like your current projects uh, like how is your life 
well, how do you split your day? Do you have like a schedule or you go like you're more free, you play music? I work from home, so okay. uh, I have this, uh, I have more time on my hands when uh, to, to, to do the music that I, I mean, not that I have to do, but if I, if I need like to do a lot of a musical tasks, like preparing for a set, you know, looking for music, creating more tracks, mm -hmm. then it's comfortable. I, I do it from home. I know some people would prefer to do it in a studio, but for me, it's kind of like the other way around. I need my... Um, my comfort and my known space that I, that I'm that I know I belong in a way, mm -hmm. and then the the good stuff come out so to speak. But yeah. uh, most of the time, I actually spend on my on my video job, like uh, doing projects, because this is uh, this is more the the main um, the part of what I do. Right. Yeah. And uh, just you know the usual work. I like to cook. Uh -huh. <laughs> I also like to eat. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's nice TV show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like to watch TV. I'm on, I'm on like an online TV, and. Um, like I said, uh, with Matthias, my husband, we yeah. just spend a lot of time doing that, cooking, watching stuff. It's really nice. I like the the home life, but also going out on the weekend is really nice. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. and, and, and so you have rituals, like anything you do every day that is like your must, could be sport or... I try to do sport, uh -huh. <laughs> not every day, but uh, to be specifically because I work from home, I try to, to do some bikes, but uh, not every day, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't call it a ritual. More like stuff that I <laughs> that I have to do. <laughs> it's on your list. <laughs> yeah, my list of on the not fun area. <laughs> must do but like not. Exactly. <laughs> must do but not the fun one. The must do that I found is more like the cooking and eating, for example. Yeah, that's, that's like I, I wanna do it every day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Very nice. Um how how is your like how do you approach your, your projects? Do you have like projects that are that last for months or is more like I work on something until I finish and then I move yeah, on Yeah, musical ones or the... Oh, musical ones. Um, well, that depends. Like, for example, tracks, they it's it's like all over the place. I can open a project and finish a track quite fast or I can just have an idea that I cook and maybe I will do it. It will take me two months to do it. Like just the, today I recorded a track that I was sitting on the idea for maybe two months, but I just didn't do anything about it because I, you need that moment that you feel right to start the project and record mm -hmm. it you know mm -hmm. but uh, tracks happen usually when I start them they happen usually fast podcast I, I prepare a lot mm -hmm. I like to to collect enough tracks and then organize them in the way that I, I, I feel like is the best way to tell kind of a story I mean the recording of the podcast actually goes fast but the, the preparation can be like a month or so so totally that good. would be like a longer project yeah because I, I think it's it's you you wanna present a story like you yeah. wanna show it and then it takes time to prepare for that. Yeah, I, I work on the the order is very important. So I pay attention to the keys of the track sometimes. I, I want to to tell you also a musical story. <laughs> it it can get very technical sometimes, but for me it's really important. Yeah. yeah. At, at the moment when you you feel you get stuck, like you, there's something like this, you're like, oh no, I've been on this track for, or on this podcast for a month. I can't move anywhere. Have you feel? Do you feel any time stuck? Do you feel like, oh, you're getting too uh, I wouldn't call it stuck, but maybe sometimes it's more like I don't feel that that um, that news to do something about it. Mm. You know, it's, a, it's like, uh, or maybe that is actually stuck. <laughs> that way, it, it's more like, not that I try and it doesn't work, it's more like that I don't feel the need to try. Right, and then yeah. I would just, but it's very natural. I think it's like something that has to come naturally. Like it's natural that it has to come naturally. <laughs> so that you, if, if you don't feel it, then it's just not going to happen. You know, so if I feel like, I, for example, with that track, yeah. that for the last two months I knew what I want to do. I even had the idea already, but I didn't feel the, I, I was stuck about the, my, my muse to do something about it. But then I just let it go. And then one day I'm just trying and oh, that works now. And then, yeah, it works out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and usually with the tracks, it's not a problem. Maybe podcasts it can be more problematic because you have a deadline. <laughs> right, so you can wait for exactly a month. Yeah. But eventually, that's what I do. I yeah. maybe would put like a three weeks before the podcast, like uh, kind mm -hmm. of like my my then okay, now I have to do it. <laughs> but by then, I collected enough tracks so I can actually do it. Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. so it depends also like what is the project so exactly. The deadline you you kind of need to move on. on yeah. yeah. And in, in terms of like this is for uh, more the producers there who will be listening to this podcast, uh, do you think you should, as a producer, new producer, is more important to send demos or to run your own thing? I know you have uh, a perspective. I don't know if it's like this or that. I think you should always push for both. I mean, when I started my label, uh, I think it was already in this kind of like transition mode of the techno world that it's very hard to get into existing labels. Uh, I think uh, I sent my tracks to a lot of labels and no none of them wanted it and um, i just got into my conclusion that i think i just have to do it myself if it's vinyl or digital i think eventually you should just 
try to do it yourself as a producer because you have more control, you know what you want to do. Nobody will tell you, okay, change that track. We don't want this track. You can tell your own story. And you are guaranteed to put your music out. And yeah. uh, even if it's digital, there are ways you can, you can push it. And uh, if you're doing vinyl, you can, I think if the music is good, you can easily get it to all the stores and to, for example, YouTube, if you mm. go on one of the channels that are uploading techy music and then you have the reach of the whole world. And it doesn't matter if it's your own label or not. I think people will give it a listen. It's, uh, yeah, very true, very true. I think it's fundamental because I think somehow we tell ourselves the stories, at least I was telling myself the same story, that we need to release on a huge label, otherwise we're never going to make it and our music is never going to go out there. And we start sending demos and nobody replies, nobody exactly. opens the emails. Eventually, it's fine. I mean, it's, it's beautiful to have your own thing, as you mentioned, like, you're flexible. Think, yeah, it's, it, and it's also, it's also, I think, at least for me, that was the only option because I really mm -hmm. felt that the big labels usually go with their own crew, so to speak. Like, you know, like, I don't know, if you look at uh, Token, they, you know, they have their own labels and they, they don't, I don't think they just have the, the, the means or the, the will to, to find new artists. And that's fine because they already have kind of a story and they, like their artists is kind of like their tools. Yeah. So unless maybe through connections or through people that you know, then you can get into an existing label. But otherwise, I would tell you to just try it yourself and just keep releasing music. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> and, and, and it works. It works because your music is out and people listen. People find you even when the label is not like a huge brand yet. Yeah. And I think it's, it's it, one other thing that I think is important for people to know is that the more you release music, the more someone might be interested in actually releasing your music. Like the thing you, you said with the Anagram, with Sinful. Like it happened because you were probably both releasing music and you were reached out to each other because you had music out already and you connected on that and then eventually you ended up like releasing on each other's labels. Yeah, I think specifically in that case, we, I think we first connected on a personal level mm. and that, that obviously helped to, to, to bring it out on the musical level. And I think eventually that's what has to happen with other labels too. Like if you, if you get to the people... As a, either as a friend or musically, then mm -hmm. you could also get your music out there too. Yeah. And uh, yeah, behind the label, there is always a person. So. Exactly. <laughs> and usually they like music and they like, I mean, I think everybody likes to hear new music. I also, mm -hmm. if people send me promos, I always say, I really like to hear new music. Always send me, like, I will never say, like, even though I, I know that the, the, it's really tight and it's really hard to, to ex accept new artists, I would mm -hmm. always say, yes, please send out because I like to listen because who knows, maybe something would really speak to me, you know, and if it one million percent will speak to me, there can be something about it. True, yeah. When the music is good, I think it, it's, uh, it, that's, that's the thing that beats everything out like it's the most important thing is the music eventually yeah. uh, and probably paired up with that you need to do your effort you need to put the music out otherwise nobody will come to your room and, and knock the door and be like yeah. oh Elad or anyone <laughs> like send me your music <laughs> yeah. it without it, it's just I think it's also different from a DJ perspective and a label owner perspective because as a DJ I, 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 my door is even more open and like, send me mm. things like anything I would play anything that I like but for releasing on the label then it has to be much more specific sound that also fits mm. the label also fits with something that I think other people would want to play you know because it's such a big um, it's an expense it's something that you have to think about it how, how how would it look outside when it's out it's not necessarily just my personal taste as a DJ yeah and, I, and, yeah, and what tends to happen with labels is that the label have some sort of plan and planning and sometimes it's six months, 12 months long. So someone sends you something that is interesting, but then there's kind of no space for that track to be released within 12 months. Yeah. And that's the flexibility point you were mentioning, that yes. when you run your own thing, you know that you can put out the track whenever you want. Exactly. And literally with the distributor, you can get it on, on Spotify if you want in a week. Yes. You can get it on Bandcamp on the same day, mm -hmm. this next hour. Uh, if it's SoundCloud, it's in a minute. Exactly. Yeah, and, and that's a beautiful thing of, of the internet in general. Yeah. Yes, as long as you really come up, I mean, it's a, you don't have to come up with a story or anything, but just make sure your product is is uh, is well thought. So mm. don't just release your first four. If you have like, I don't know, four tracks, don't just release them. Maybe mm. make another four and then think about it and say, hmm, which one of these four are the best? And you will actually see that you think differently about it because it definitely happens to me. Mm -hmm. Also with the vinyl industry, industry usually takes so, such a long time to release the music that it's a guarantee that by the time your record is out, you wouldn't like the tracks anymore. <laughs> so you really have to think it's, about it hard and think like, okay, like what would I think about it six months from now? And like, I, I, what would other DJs think about it six months from now? And yeah. It's, it's a process. How important is it for you to make records, like physical records? Uh, I think in, in Berlin, it is important. I mean, mm. I, I really like to, to be in the record stores uh, that are that are like uh, really historic in Berlin, like Hard Wax. It's, mm -hmm. it's something you cannot do without... Uh, without being on vinyl. 
And uh, I mean, specifically, I mean, I, I don't play all records. I play maybe only maybe 30% records. But uh, yeah, it, it's nice for me to be to being on record. It makes it just a bit different, even though that the technicality of it, I think, might be the same if I would also release just digital. It was a thought. Mm. I, mm. I was thinking about it for a while. Maybe it will also happen in the future that we yeah. will have like digital releases or maybe like a sub, like maybe like in between releases that are digital, something like that, like kind of like yeah. a sub label. Because there was nothing wrong with it, in my opinion. I mean, it, it's great. But vinyl is also, it just makes it a bit more special in, in far of the, the, like the format that you bring it out. And so it, it makes it a little bit more unique, I think. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing is that you actually, it's, it's literally like music made on something physical. Like yeah. You touch the music almost. That's a I mean, for DJs that play violin, this is, I think, it's also, it's a, I know some DJs that play vinyl only, and I know that they really appreciate it more. And there are a lot of them all around the, the world. I mean, people who actually order a vinyl from me, that's already, it tells me that like, wow, we wanted that track that you just made on this wax. And even though it's available digitally, we just bought it now on wax. So that already shows me how much they like the music. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. There are, there are crazy guys like Sunil Sharp. He's a... Uh, He just plays vinyls and he's uh, committed to, he just sticks to that and he has so many that it's, it's like, it's, yeah, I'm Freddy sure it's K, Ron Albrecht, yeah, yeah, Dr. Rubinstein yeah. plays a lot of vinyl, Hector yeah. Orsic is doing now vinyl only. It's really nice because, uh, I mean, the art of the vinyl region is totally different. Hmm. You don't get the same uh, characteristics that you do with uh, CDJs. It can be even harder, depends on the booth and everything. So I have a lot of respect for those. DJs. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And it's a beautiful thing. Like, So now, somehow, like, uh, we lost that thing of, of like, seeing a, a, a DJ very skilled who was playing balance because CDJs, it's a bit more comfortable for the DJ. Yeah. You don't need to carry your bag. You can just put one USB stick and you're do done, essentially, if you want. Yeah. And I think, yeah, it, it's... It's hard. I think it's a trade-off. It's a choice as well, as we were mentioning before. Like sometimes, I mean, I've seen a lot of DJs do a really amazing, let's not call it tricks, but really mm -hmm. amazing techniques. Uh, also with USB sticks, I think it's a matter of how, where, where are you taking it? You know, like uh, a lot of DJs that maybe make up for the fact that they don't use vinyl, but they plan their sets really well. And uh, just heard a set from Canding Ray, and it was absolutely amazing. And the mm -hmm. amount of planning that went there. From talking talking to him, I just is insane, and, and this guy is absolutely amazing, and he's not playing vinyl. So for me, I was impressed a, a, a lot from that, and it's not necessarily because of the, the 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 how what he was playing on, but it's more like what you, the the thought and the care that you take into planning your sets, and I think um, mm -hmm. that also is a thing you can do if you don't want to play vinyl. Just take the extra step, maybe think more like DJ Pete. He can play maybe three, four tracks at a time. He would always mix two track and he would plan it in advance so they fit together really nicely. Or DVS1, for example, what he does on the DJ booth is okay, above yeah. and beyond and, mm -hmm. uh, and he's not playing vinyl. So I think yeah. it's just mostly about, like skill doesn't have to come from vinyl. It can come, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to. Yeah, yeah. And, and what one of the things that I'm appreciating more and more is when you say to see something unique, that is uh, a bit of like, you know, that that guy is really good or that girl is really good for that reason. Mm -hmm. And you go there, you're like, wow, it's impressive. Like it inspires you as an artist or entertains you or makes you feel the music amazingly. Yes. If you are a fan. Yeah. It's a very nice thing. Um, let me think. And do you think, like, do you plan your sets in advance? Not the podcast, but when you go out and you... Yeah, definitely. Okay. Not not from the beginning till the end, but I do, would I will plan like either groups of tracks or... Mm -hmm. Uh, pairs of tracks that I know that work together. Sometimes I would, I mean, basically I would take what I do on the floor and I would try to do it at home to predict kind of like, okay, maybe these two and these two and these two. And it doesn't mean that it will stay together because a lot of times on the floor things, do, you know, I, I have another element, which is the crowd and the sound and the booth and the vibe. And then I would go like, okay, that not or that yes. Or maybe I switch these two. But it's mm. really good for me to have a plan because it makes such a difference i didn't used to do it until maybe two years ago and since i started doing it i definitely feel i'm better because um it's basically the same thing as not planning but with the planning <laughs> you know it's like i still have my improvisation on the floor yeah but it adds another level so you plan and then you can vary it the exactly. as you wish yeah like take your like plan that, left yeah. and right you don't have to necessarily follow it yeah yeah it's very cool yeah and one thing that, that, you, that you mentioned that you moved to berlin in 2014 yes. uh What was the, the reason? I know you come from Israel. Mm -hmm. And what was, why did you decide, okay, I want to go to Berlin. That's it. It's my... Uh, specifically city. Berlin, I think because it was always kind of like in the back of my head, like a place that I really liked. I used uh -huh. to come here to, to visit a few times. And then 
uh, with my work as uh, doing the video and stuff I just decided to come and see if I could do it from here mm-hmm. and basically because uh, because of the internet thank you internet yes. all I had to do is just uh, bring my computer and I was done so I came for a month I think and I was like okay that's fine I can do it and I saw that obviously there's a lot of more things here that appeal to me you see the nightlife the people and I and basically then I decided that that was it I mean it's not like I I really hated Israel or anything I just um I I, I couldn't I couldn't find enough things that appeal to me over there yeah. and when I came here it really felt correct I mean just from the people and also the friends that I had here and uh, it was it felt so natural so I was like okay I guess I live here now it clicked yeah yeah it really clicked wow. I mean I'm sure a lot of people have the same experience when they come here and uh, when, when you just feel it's right then you know I didn't even have to explain it to myself so much it just was really natural for me to come here mm-hmm. yes yeah Indeed. I mean, when you click with a place, it's just, it feels like you want to be there. Like, yeah. That's it. <laughs> you no, find a job, back. you make it work. Exactly. You exactly. want to go back. And it, it, was there a moment in your life when you thought, okay, I know music is going to be a huge part of my life for the foreseeable time, when you made kind of a shift from before and after? Uh, I mean, I've been DJing since I was 20 or so, so now I'm 32. Mm-hmm. So it's already kind of like 12 years. I really like DJing for... Uh, for since, since I was even younger I was making music I think think I was 14 or so with fruity loops and mm-hmm. impulse tracker and some really old software that I don't think anybody <laughs> knows but uh, I, I I always knew music was a big part of my life and DJing like I said a bit after but it was not techno mm-hmm. it was uh, either a deep house or uh, electronic music in general and then uh, I even had like a show maybe that could be a cool uh, fact <laughs> that nobody knows about me that I did in nice. Israel I used to uh, I used to have like kind of like electronic music cover show which would like I would take tracks and I would rebuild them without the melodies for example and I would play the melodies on a keyboard in a club wow so st- similar way that there's like a band who's playing a cover for some random song then I, I would do it for tracks I would basically What? just edit existing tracks and play their main element on top and on, uh, on uh, but I do it again it was not with techno yeah Yeah, it was um, electronic at all or it, it was? No, it was definitely electronic, but yeah. just slower stuff, um, mm-hmm. maybe more deep house stuff like this. Like, for example, there's this famous track from Ten Snake, Coma Cat. I don't know it, no. Check okay. it out. Like re- yeah. Really, really slow, but uh, stuff with melodies. I always was connected to melodies and stuff like that. Uh-huh. So I used to do that, but then again, It, it, I don't I wouldn't do it today because now I have my own tracks to, to work with <laughs> at the time it was more different I, I didn't have a lot of music to work with mm-hmm. and since I came to Berlin obviously I made this switch to techno because you cannot you cannot uh, you cannot afford it <laughs> <laughs> the moment you come here it's like in your face techno techno is amazing and like I, I was convinced pretty fast because I, yeah. I also really enjoy uh, going to parties yeah I really like that it's a huge part of my inspiration I think without going yeah. out I would not produce music. Yeah, I think, I mean, if you go to a club in Berlin, techno's on the menu, like this. <laughs> yeah, but usually good techno, like, mm. it's, for me to hear a good techno set, then it's, it's super inspirational. It gives me the, it's kind of like charging me in all of this aspect of groove and, and, how, and sound. And, you know, when you hear a track in full volume in a club, it, it really puts me in a mode of, like, making music. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful thing, like, when, when you are... Like, I've heard, I've heard different, different uh, opinions about, like, for musicians going to listen to sets, someone might get very judgmental and critical, mm-hmm. and, like, having this analytical thing of, like, oh, this thing doesn't quite work, and they start, like, overanalyzing. But I think most of the people are, are very inspired by, by stuff. Like, you go there, you just enjoy it so much, and you're like, this was so amazing. You go back to the studio, and you're like, I want to yeah. do music now. Yeah, I mean, I, of course it depends. There's, like, a... How I think DJs maybe or like you said producers can be a bit more uh, judgmental about mm-hmm. things, but I, I try to let go. I try to just go and enjoy and of course, you cannot always like everything and if I don't like a set, that's fine. I would just do something else. you know mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm not gonna be there and judge every single track <laughs> because that, that's, <laughs> uh, that's, not, that's not beneficial to anybody. you know no. I always say if you don't like the, the set, just go home or in some cases you can just wait a couple of hours and yeah. there would be a lot more but. For me, I, I always try to, to, enjoy, to enjoy what I hear because, I mean, if I really like it, then it, it gives me an experience, not just, a, not just as a DJ or as a producer, just as a person. You know, you take it and, and you, you, have it, you have it in your head. Like uh, some sets, I can tell you, I will never forget. Like mm-hmm. sets that maybe happened a couple of years ago already, but I just, I remember them so well. Yeah. I, I read of the, you mentioned Freddie Kay, Closing by Kain, 2016, I think. Oh, he did it a lot. Yeah, yeah, a lot, yeah. <laughs> I don't know a specific <laughs> one, but I, I can definitely tell you that the first closing that he did, I remember because uh, it was the first and it was just amazing. Yeah. 
wow, it's it, it, that's yeah, it was uh, really good. I can I can I can totally like imagine like how beautiful it is when you see something that strikes a chord with you and you're like yeah, wow, it's amazing, yeah. And it's really amazing to see so many DJs, you know, in the techno scene. I don't know millions of them, but none of them play the same. It's mm. crazy. Like you, there are so many genres and and styles that you can take. Sometimes even with the same tracks, but you create a different type of story. And all of these people, like uh, all of these people, especially people who play closing, which is not an easy mm. task, you know, they are all playing really, really different. Yeah, yeah. I think it because it pulls out like literally uh, like a different part of your yeah. brain. Yeah. You have to take all of your music collections, <laughs> so you're basically telling me everything, like your soft tracks, your hard tracks, your deep, you're taking everything that you, that you found through your, throughout your life and of obviously more like new stuff. If you play a lot of closings, then you just collect it into maybe a 10 hour set. Yeah. And uh, really, I, there's so many closing artists that, I, artists that I know that I really like. If it's like Kyle Geiger, Ben uh-huh. Clock, uh, Inland, I haven't seen, heard a closing from here for a while, but he's also really good. Dr. Rubinstein, they are really playing yeah. really great music. And, and different. That's that was my point. That it's unique not to, at all. Them, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, if you, if you do vinyl only, <laughs> you need for to example, bring some friends to, to help you carry the bags. Uh, yeah, well. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you should see, uh, for example, Freddie K or also on Albus. They bring so many records when they play clothes. Yeah. I think maybe four or five bags. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Must be expensive for flights as well. <laughs> luckily, yeah. Uh, luckily, yeah. They live here. One, yeah, yeah. At least Freddy, Freddy, yeah. Yeah, and uh, one Alp is also in Germany. But yeah, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> not easy, no. Especially no. if you don't, for example, or if you live in a fourth, fifth floor, imagine that. Phew, yeah, exactly. Records yeah. are heavy. Records are heavy, yeah. Especially when you probably, I mean, like, if you think about it, like, a record that probably has on average four tracks, you're not going to play four of them. Maybe no. two. No. Maybe. Sometimes, mostly even one. Exactly, mostly even one, so you have a set of like 14 hours. Exactly. You probably uh, play, I don't know, maybe 15 to 20 to 30 tracks, uh, depends how An fast hour, you play. An hour, yeah, yeah. yeah. Multiply by 14. <laughs> it's a lot <laughs> There of... you go. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, sometimes when Freddie K plays, then you would see him play, and then he disappears, and you don't realize where he is. He's downstairs, he's just looking for records, <laughs> because he has so many, so he puts them on the ground, and then he will disappear for a bit and looking for records, come back up with a record and wow. put it on the... It, it's really nice. Yeah. It might, I'm sure they must have a strategy for like sorting out records like when be. you're playing. Has yeah, to it's be. impossible yeah, yeah. otherwise. Has to be. Yeah. Either a labeling system or, you know, you separate them from bags. But it, I think the also all the methods are, of all the DJs are really different. Also with digital, I mean, mm. you cannot... Even with a... With a digital um, method, if you play with CDJs, you cannot just have one long playlist for closing. You know, it would also be really messy. I think there, yeah. I, I know each DJ have their own like labeling system. Maybe mm-hmm. they will split the closing set to three folders mm-hmm. or to styles. You know, you can get like more stuff for the morning, stuff for the evening. Yeah, and do, do you have a, like some kind of folding or like organization system? Yeah, or? I also have like kind of like a lot of folders that I use to sort. Mm-hmm. Ty- types of tracks or like st- tracks that I can call them like moments mm-hmm. which are tracks that I, re- I know they would bring some kind of moment on, on the floor when I play them or tracks that are really hard or tracks that are like more deep and I usually have for each set I have a playlist of that specific set mm-hmm. and then I can go from that playlist to the kind of like genre folders and then back and forth yeah well okay yeah so <laughs> I'm sure I, I would I would love to have like a comparison of all the DJs or how they have like I'm sure stuff. nobody does the same thing really yeah nobody. exactly everybody have their own shtick I think like an yeah. organizational method <laughs> yeah because it's, it's so personal in the end like, yeah. it has to be purposeful and useful when you play actually yeah and how you hear music is not necessarily how another guy like sometimes people would tell me oh that track is really deep and I would say hmm for me it sounds more trippy and that <laughs> other guy said but trippy is more like that and I just use because you when you use words to describe tracks it's super weird you know it's super weird it's super personal yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, okay, it's a, it's a lot of, like, uh, interesting stuff. Yeah, sure. Uh, anything that, like, uh, if you were not a musician, mm-hmm. if you were not, like, producing videos, what would you be? I would really like to paint. Paint? <laughs> I'm terrible at it. <laughs> <laughs> you should not see me paint. I, I went to drawing. <laughs> I, I would really like to because I see a lot of time art, uh, art from other people and I was like, ah, I wish I could do that, but I definitely can't. Yeah, I think wow. it's something you can learn, though. I yeah. mean... Also, I think you have to have it naturally, but if you don't, like my case, you can learn it, but I think it would take forever and mm-hmm. you don't have the time for it. Yeah, it would take a lot of time, yeah. Yeah, and is practice. There, yeah, exactly, practice. Is there any specific painting that comes to mind that was something really interesting for you, painting or, or actually artist, uh, painter? Uh, I don't know that many. It's just uh, mm-hmm. I have uh, one friend, his name is Mark von der Hort, okay. and he's doing like really creative um, 
collages and paintings and he, he did one for me once wow. maybe a year ago or so uh, it's in our apartment and it's he's so talented and so for example stuff like this I, I, I just see him and I, I, it's so inspiring what he does I wish I could do the same I have another mm. friend uh, his name is Yaron he's also painting like really like like uh, like with a walk home it's kind of like this um, tablet that you can paint in a computer and he's creating things with so much detail that I see it and it's so beautiful so I think I wish I could do that but yeah <laughs> again it's like so far even though I'm I do the graphic design I do animation and, and stuff that relate to it but not in any way yeah it's, it's a different art technique like, yeah exactly uh, yeah. and I'm sure like people who get to the level like they've, they've, they've been maybe talented but they've spent a lot of time like, developing that since to, childhood I can even imagine even. yeah exactly to catch up it's like it's a lifetime you have to make the decision okay now I'm stopping doing everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> I put everything on the side or at least I don't know to to put some hours per day but it, like I said it has to be a it has to become like a passion and art is all, usually something that you it's really hard to get to a point where you also make money from so it's not like I can incorporate it into a job right away mm-hmm. it has to be more like a hobby that turns into later yeah yeah that's, and that's a, you raise a very important point like art Like especially because art or like even music, for sure, is a very hard process. Yeah, especially to make it to make it like your uh, unique source of income, it takes years and not everybody manages to do that. Eventually. Definitely. Uh, uh, do you manage yet, or do you want at all to at some point for your music to be your only source of? I think it's pretty hard. I think mm-hmm. only as a touring DJ you would be able to make enough money to 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 Leave put music coffee. on yeah exactly mm-hmm. but i don't know if it's a it's a situation i can get to at the moment i yeah. i know most of the dj's hold another job unless they to unless they tour and touring means that every weekend you have at least two gigs and yeah. that's like an, an regular thing and then you can quit your other job but most people i know they keep another one because it, you want to be stable you know you don't want to yeah. music it's something that should come from from your heart and you don't want to you don't want to get to a point when you're like fighting for money you know and i think yeah the this one uh, really, uh, probably did an interview months ago We well, was talking touching on this point which was I think about um, there is a point where you you just want to have your art free and okay. you don't want to play a game that doesn't need to be a job for which your art is like constructed yeah it's a yeah it's a very important thing and I think um, producers uh, or upcoming artists if you're listening to this like yeah. uh, you're not the only one who's struggling with money if you just want to do music and it's fine to have another job definitely you do your stuff It's even better because it will give you more more money and more stability to to have time to do your music you know like to so you're not just like thinking about the next month or what will happen if I don't get a gig or what would I do so you're more balanced and your brain is more calm and you you have more more time to especially when you make music because at least mm-hmm. when you're DJing you can just it, it's a bit more uh, I mean you still have to to put the time to maybe look for more music but you mm-hmm. your your job is already at the gig but when you have to produce it's something you have to do on your own time you have to you you have to be in a mood for it you know you have, it has to bring some kind of emotion out and yeah. if you're stressed maybe you are just making stress tracks I don't know maybe some people <laughs> like that I mean I can imagine some some, some tracks come from a, maybe more a, I wouldn't call it negative but maybe more from a dark place you know and it's still nice yeah this is yeah yes yeah. mm. But I think, yeah, exactly. If you live under stress, like at some point it's probably unsustainable. Exactly. At some point you will crash. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just bad for you. Yeah, exactly. A um, couple of more questions mm-hmm. and then we wrap up. Um, if you were to say something to an emerging producer, someone who is like starting or considering to start producing their own music, one suggestion you would give them to kind of say to them, guys, push. Like, just don't be afraid of doing your music. You'll make it. It's going to be great. Anything that you think is going to be helpful for producers? Uh, what I always like to do is just consult with people. Like mm-hmm. I know a lot of people are shy, but I think it's very healthy to take, I don't know, if you have a friend or even like find some producer that you like. I, I would definitely do mm-hmm. it for people. If they would send me their music, I would give them advice or I would tell them what I think or maybe some technical advice. A lot of times I, I got so much better by asking friends about stuff and they would tell me oh here you could actually improve that or mm. here I'll teach you a nice mixing technique um, that will take your tracks to a new level and I was like wow I would have never known that if I wouldn't ask so just don't be afraid yeah. to reach out to people and like don't be don't think oh maybe he would not like it maybe we'll get pissed maybe that's rude no yeah just try there's nothing to lose take your tracks take them outside and or if it's for your friends and also don't be afraid to take criticism because mm-hmm. a lot of my tracks they totally you got uh what they are just from friends telling me stuff about them yeah even health track I, I, I think yeah. it was really different in the beginning and I think it was maybe Hector Oaks that told me maybe you should take that part and do that and then I was like hmm and then yeah. it, it, it got a whole new twist and then it turned into kind of like what it is today yeah 
Um, so I think it's really healthy to consult with people. It is, yeah, and get feedback. Yeah. Even when it's like uh, non-positive, actually, that's a good thing because it helps you improve. Yeah, yeah. Helps you. I mean, I always say like, I, it's something my friend said, it's like when mm-hmm. you get, even when you get a negative feedback, it, it's still good because either you're accepting it and like, you know what, you were right, or you're like, mm, I don't agree with you. And that's why I think that what I did is actually better. You know, like it either strengthen, strengthen your position or mm-hmm. it goes to the other way. So it's, it's either way healthy. Yeah, it is. Yes. So guys, get more feedback. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Enjoy. It's and important. Yes, it is. And wh- where can people find you? Like, where can people find your work? I'm everywhere, like social media, uh, Facebook. Mm-hmm. I, ha- I have um, SoundCloud also, even though I don't upload there a lot. It's more like repost and stuff because uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't like to post my music before it's actually available for uh, for for people to reach it. You know. Got it. Yeah, yeah. And we'll put the links in the in the in the mm-hmm. whatever we share the podcast. Uh, even do you have any upcoming projects that you would um, like to mention? There is the next record, Frontless Record 07. Mm-hmm. It, I hope it will be out around February, March, maybe. Okay, yeah. It will be a solo EP of mine with a remix. Not sure yet. Mm-hmm. Working on it. Okay, okay. And I'm working on a DJ set with my husband, Matthias okay, Weber. Yeah. We started uh, practicing together. And uh, next month, actually, we're going to play the first time in Amsterdam. Congrats, yes. Yeah, it's a really cool party. It's in a church, an abandoned wow. church. <laughs> so uh-huh. already like a nice mood for it. And uh, it's going to be pretty inter- interesting because... Uh, He always comes with me and he's super involved with what I do. So for mm-hmm. us to play together first yeah. time, it's really exciting. Yes, and you mentioned that before uh, before the, the interview that you also did a couple of records together, at least one. On we did a lot of tracks together, but yeah. uh, only one we released at the moment together. Yeah. The third one. And mm-hmm. uh, it's also nice. It, it, because <laughs> he's, uh, we, we, he has such a good ear for music and every time that I produce, I always consult with him. He's like kind of like another me like another yeah. ear that I can consult with and uh, I trust him so much so he has a really good taste in music so when it comes to DJing it was super natural for us to do it together so yeah. I can't wait yeah yeah, yeah. congrats like Thank really you. happy for you <laughs> looking forward to hearing if you publish something you record the set we'll love yeah, to hear maybe we will yeah. yeah very nice um, anything else that you would like to for people to a message that you would say to anyone who is into music well <laughs> Keep dancing. Keep I don't know. I mean, I, mean, I, <laughs> I think it's. It. Uh, I, I think music without dancing is like, uh, like I said, kind of like a club without lights. I mean, I think eventually that's why. I, that's why I, I like most about music, just to dance to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So guys, keep dancing. <laughs> yeah, keep dancing. <laughs> I love that. It's, it's also like kind of a release for me. It's taking the music and kind of like using it. Mm-hmm. Because also for sure you can hear it at home. You can chill with it. You can sleep with it. You can work with it. You can do so many things. But in my opinion, for me, techno is used best on the floor. When you have yeah. a good sound system to it, and you're in a in a with people that you like, it's the best. It really, it gives me the most amazing moments of my life uh, musically. Yeah, and it does it for you as an artist, but also as a fan. Yeah, other, for sure. I, yeah. I even before I released music, it was one of my favorite uh, things to do. Uh, you know, like even like, not like a hobby, but just the, my the, the one of the most fun things for me to do was to just dance to music. Yeah. Wow, okay. So guys, keep dancing. <laughs> And this is uh, Elad Magdazi. Thanks so much for, for being my here. My pleasure. Thank you for having a, me. Yeah, my, my, my our pleasure. It's, uh, it's been a great, great uh, chat. Yes. Uh, Hope to see you on the floor somewhere. <laughs> for sure, yes. <laughs> front Thank left. you. Front left, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Now that I know, I'm going to be yes. there. <laughs> you know where to find me. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Amazing. <laughs>